Well, I'll say good morning, Rotary District 7770. Welcome to Conversations with Rotary Action People for Monday, February 28th. My name is Donald Hovis, your CRAP host. We're going to jump right into our program today. Joining us, uh, District Governor Paul Walter from the Rotary Club of Hilton Head Island. And I believe we will also have on Assistant Governor Dot Yeager. Uh, District Governor Paul, I'll turn it over to you, sir. Great. Thank you all for being here this morning and wanted to get some information to you all so that you, if you haven't heard it already, we are uh, in the process of writing a global grant. This is going to be an all club global grant. And the reason I'm calling it that is because a lot of times a, a global grant may be sponsored by a specific club. In this case, it's not. It, it's our district's global grant. If clubs want to participate in this, this is an opportunity. This is not a command performance by any means. It is just an opportunity for clubs to participate in a global grant that will you'll learn a little more about. So let's get into the presentation. And I have a question for you. And let's see, Lou, Sandy, who else? Bernie, you, you can't answer this question if you happen to know it. So uh, let's see here. So. Does anyone have an idea of what was Rotary's first community service project in 1907? Don't all speak at once. Anybody know? Come on. Yes. What was it? it was, a public toilet. Yeah, public, yeah, public toilet. There you go. Problem. Yes. It was a public comfort restroom in Chicago, right by their city hall. And it was installed by Rotary Club number one, the Rotary Club of Chicago. So, and the reason I bring this up is because it falls in line with what we are doing and what we're proposing in this global grant. And so in conjunction with the Rotary Club of Jadpur Padmini and their district 3053, we are looking to support this global grant which will tie into the Empowering Girls Initiative that our international president has put forth this year. And, and this is going with the all-female club of Rotary Club of Jadpur Padmini, and which I thought was interesting, but they, you know, they're, they're kind of doing things different. They used to be all male clubs. Well, now there's all female clubs, which I, I think is wonderful. Um, just so you get an idea of where this is, we're in the, if you look up in the upper left side of, of India zone, uh, uh, excuse me, district 3053 is where we are uh, looking at doing this grant. And then this is Jadpur Padmini, just to give you an idea of where the heck it is in the world, is I like to kind of know where I'm going and know what I'm putting our funds to and where they are. I've been on phone conversations with two of the members in Zoom conversations and multiple emails with um, Preeti Mehta and Jigna Mehta, who are, are both members of this club in Jadpur. And what we've been discussing is a global grant that will focus on empowering girls. And what it does is help with the menstrual health and hygiene of, of girls in those communities in the public government run schools. And this global grant would again be with our district, the Rotary Club of Jadpur Padmini, uh, as well as Rotary Clubs in our district. And then we've also got clubs, uh, Rotary Club of Bentonville, Arkansas did this same global grant with this club a few or just last year, and they have joined in and put in some BDF as well, and I'll go through what, what uh, the numbers are to date. But it is uh, in an effort to help with uh, keeping girls in school. It, it, it will have effect on girls and boys, but the primary effect is to keep girls in school and, and so that they can have sanitary conditions to, to be in there and, and stay in school. So I wanna, provide you a video, video and pictures uh, may say a thousand words. So let's, let's watch this for a minute and then we'll continue on. Namaskar. On behalf of Rotary Club of Jodhpur Padmini and Rotary District 3053, I would like to take you on a tour of our three happy schools. But first, dear friends, please indulge me 
as I narrate to you a little story about Bhavna and Hari, two children residents of a small village by the name of Piparlai that sits less than an hour's drive away from our blue city, Jodhpur. Menstruation and female hygiene being a stigmatic concept in this small village, 13-year-old Bhavna would be forced to stay at home away from school for six days every month. In fact, as she was approaching the end of her school year for the sixth grade, she worried that her dream of becoming a teacher would soon come to a crashing halt. You see, it was common in people life for girls to drop out of school after the sixth grade to stay at home, all because the school lacked even the basic sanitation facilities. So much so, this school had a single cubicle for all girls and did not have even a hand wash basin for its students. Forget about what we city dwellers think of as basic amenities like soap and menstruation pads. Bhavna worried about her future every passing day. Let's pivot to Hari's situation. A 10-year-old student in the same school, Hari's story was equally bad. Because the school had no cubicle for boys, when nature called, Hari was forced to urinate against a designated wall inside the school premises. And that's not the worst part. With no wash basin or water supply, children would just wipe their hands in the dirt. Hari had fallen ill many times before, but this time was different. This time, he had acquired a worm infection. Many trips to the hospital and then resting at home meant this little boy missed more than two months of school. When Rotary Padmini reached Piparlai and heard stories about children like Bhavna and Hari, the team realized that it was time for action to improve the basic health and sanitation conditions at this school for the betterment of the community. Similar stories were found at Akathali and Budnagar villages too. From the available club fund, we began our Swachh Bharat Swachh Vidyalaya Aligned Wash in Schools initiative by slowly improving these dreary conditions by constructing separate toilet blocks for boys and girls, complete with proper water supply and drainage, hand washing stations equipped with soap dispensers and drinking water fountains with purifiers and coolers. This work was carried out simultaneously at all three schools. We got the school buildings repaired and painted. Clean school uniforms, shoes and socks were distributed to the students. School bags, notebooks and stationeries was provided for all. We furnished the classrooms and staff rooms and decorated them with colourful paintings and murals. Libraries with over 1,000 books were set up at each school and sports equipment was provided for the all-round development of the children. Our endeavour to make these schools truly happy places for the students was lauded by many and it was not difficult to find financial support for our project. But this, just this, obviously wasn't going to be enough. Facilities can only go half the way. But to go the entire mile, we had to make sure that the students, and more so the teachers, understood the importance of proper sanitation. Multiple sanitation and hygiene education seminars were organized for the teachers and students. Girls were taught the importance of menstrual hygiene and were provided a supply of sanitary napkins. With these and other initiatives at the schools complete, Rajkia Madhyamik Vidyalai Piparlai, Rajkia Uch Prathmik Vidyalai Akathali and Rajkia Madhyamik Vidyalai Budhnagar were declared as Rotary Happy Schools. We are happy to have successfully planted the metaphorical seeds of sanitation and hygiene importance in the minds of the villagers too. This is the power of public good that Rotary brings to local communities. This year, Rotary Club of Jodhpur Padmini is also working on a Global Grant Wins project of 50,000 US dollars to cover seven government schools and which will impact 3,000 students. We believe that our initiatives can help support and get the wheel turning to improve these communities even by a factor, factor of a tenth of what we saw in the case of these three villages we would have created a healthier, safer and prosperous climate, not just in our Rotary district, but also for the people and public of the entire state of Rajasthan. Thank you. Namaskar. So when we were, when I was planning for this year, one of the things that I wanted to do was help with our presidential theme, you know, look to 
you know, which is serve to change lives. But more so, one of the initiatives of President Shaker, who actually was in one of those photographs in the video, his initiative is empowering girls. And I like to take on the initiative that our club is, is asking, or our president is asking us to do. And we are taking on this initiative in his home country. Uh, and in fact, he is actually from this area of Rajasthan there. Um, so that also is another tie. But when we're doing this, you know, we want to look at the areas of focus. And I can see the fact that, you know, we're, we're working with water and sanitation and hygiene, maternal and children health disease prevention and treatment, supporting the environment. I mean, we might hit, we probably, if we really looked at it, we could hit all the areas of focus with this global grant. So the initiative is begun. The grant is being written as we speak. It's in draft form. Um, just to know, so you know, our club or our district has put in and agreed to put in $25,000 in DDF for district designated funds. The District 3053 in India has agreed to put in $15,000. Benville, Arkansas is coming back into this and their district is gonna put in 5,000. So we're at $45,000 in DDF. Now the magic happens of the match, Bernie, you know, the magic of the match at 80%. And so that turns that $45,000 into 81,000. So the magic happens. And then it is, um, you know, fortunate or unfortunate, cash is not matched. Uh, we'd love it to be, but that's where we are looking for clubs to join in. We've had so far four Rotary clubs commit or send in funds for the global grant. And our, our district finance committee agreed to put in uh, $10,000 in cash as well. So as of today, we're at $96,000 for this global grant. And with each school costing approximately $6,500 per school, we're at, a, we're at 14 schools that we can help with these toilet blocks. So people have asked me, well, what's the goal? Well, the goal is to raise as much money as we can. There are schools that have been identified. I have a list of, of 20 that have been identified to date, but there are more than 50 schools in India that could be helped should we have the funds to do it. Um, so. I, as far as what the goal is, it's just a function of what we can raise and what we can put together from our district, which would follow along this initiative of empowering girls that our president, international president is asking us to do. So following along with our vision statement, you know, we, we will be helping those across the globe uh, with this and initiative. And I look forward to seeing what our district ends up doing. It's something that we want to uh, end pretty soon. So by the end of, end of March, if not sooner, we'd like to know if clubs are willing to support the, uh, the initiative here with this global grant. And if they are, then they can just contact me and I'm happy to give you more information. We are gonna have a presentation at the uh, all club conference in a few weeks as well. So stay tuned to hear more about it. And now I want to hear, I'd like to hear from uh, AG Dot, who is on the call. And I thought what better, you, you, you know, I can talk all about it, but she has seen the conditions and been in India firsthand. And so I thought we would have Dot come and talk and then we'll open it up for questions should y'all have uh, any questions about the project. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, and Sandy went on the trip with us as well. I think she was here a minute ago. I don't see her now. Um, my husband and I were lucky enough to get to go on the NID trip um, to India about three years ago. Um, as it turned out, they canceled the NID, the National Immunization Day, I mean, two weeks before we were leaving because there weren't enough vaccines in the country to administer to all the children. They need millions. Um, but we did have two different um, experiences of administering polio vaccines to children. So we were very pleased and we, and we picked up a lot of extra projects. And this was, um, we like to travel a lot and this was one of the best trips that I've ever taken. I have to say it was, it was a life-changing, very memorable trip. And we saw gorgeous things in India at the Taj Mahal. We met the people. It was, it was an overload of sensory type of uh, trip. Um, but there were, there were terrible situations there too. The, living conditions, there's such a huge discrepancy between the very wealthy 
and the very poor. So we'd be riding down the highway and, and the families live, living, whole families living in the medians in the middle of the highway. And they have tents and they're toddlers in diapers, that's it. No clothes, no shoes, just in the median living with a little smoke fire and, and that's, that's their living conditions and the cars whizzing by either side of the highway. It's, it's astounding to us to think of people living like that. Um, we visited a, a school that had started on the side of the um, road and this had um, started a man walked by and saw a couple of kids from the nearby um, slums just playing in the hard dirt. And he, he sat and talked to them and decided to start teaching them. And a few weeks later, he had 12 kids that he was teaching just on, on the side of the road. And uh, um, a doctor by a nearby hospital walked by one day and saw these kids and he was a Rotarian. He said, I think we can help. And when we went, they had 120 kids in this school. The Rotary Club had gotten them desks and all the kids had uniforms and they met each day under a tarp. There were four sticks, po four poles and a tarp over the poles. And that was their school. They had a whiteboard and they had nothing else. There were no bathrooms, there were no, no lunch rooms, nothing. But these kids were there every day and they put on a program for us and they sang and they danced. And they, um, each of us got a picture that the children had drawn for us. It was, it was very moving. I had to, I mean, it was very moving. And um, um, they were very proud. Two of the girls had gotten accepted in the government sponsored school. Schools are not mandatory in India. So if you're very poor, you don't even get a chance to go to school. And these two girls had gotten accepted in the government sponsored school. So they had left, but they came back for the day the day to do part of this dance program that they had for us. And um, so it's very interesting. Um, we also went to a government sponsored school. It was a middle school and they had a, a program that they had done for us. So we all met out in the courtyard and had all these chairs set up. So we were treated, you know, as dignitaries and all these kids performed. Um, they were participating in this WINS program the, where they learn about hygiene. And um, one of the things they told us is they had to teach the children to sit on a toilet, not to stand on the toilet. They, they didn't know about toilets. They didn't know that you're supposed to sit on the toilet. Um, and this is the first time I heard about the girls once they reached puberty and they started, you know, the monthly cycles, they didn't go to school for that week because there was, there was no facility, no help for them. So they had to stay home, which is, um, Really awful when you think about education is, is really the only way out of those terrible poverty situations. So when we were there, somebody mentioned, there were a lot of us, and said, somebody mentioned there was a restroom inside. Of course, it's a school. So I went in to check out the restroom. You know, if there's one available, you should take advantage of it. And um, first thing I noticed when I walked in, the sink, they did have a sink, but there was a, a bucket of water. And that's where you're supposed to wash your hands in the bucket of water. And even before COVID, and we're so hyper aware of germs, that was, um, you know, I didn't, I wasn't going to wash my hands in that bucket of water because I'm sure it's filthy. And so I went to the stall and, and opened the door and where the bath toilet should have been, and there was just a hole in the floor. And that's, those are the conditions that they have in India. And this was a government sponsored school. So that was rather shocking. Of course, I turned around and walked back out and just um, didn't need to go that badly. Um, we also visited a hospital that had a polio wing and we got to talk to some of the polio patients where they were doing surgeries. And they, um, they talked about multiple surgeries to like lengthen a leg. That's often a, a situation with a polio, you have a shorter leg. And, um, and we visited there and then we went outside. There was a, a separate entrance going into the building um, from outside where they stored the polio vaccines. And it was about the size of an office, somebody's private home office. And they had, you know, freezers that looked like they came from Lowe's or Home Depot and that's where they stored everything, um, all the polio vaccines. It, it, was a, it was very, very fundamental. But again, there we were in the parking lot. Some of the ladies in our group saw a restroom connected to the hospital and went over and they turned right around and came back out because it was a hole in the floor and they were just very, un, un, you know, conditions that we wouldn't expect to find here, but um, it's just a, a different culture. So um, some of the other quick, quick, um, we visited a slum while we were there right after we administered um, the polio vaccines at a clinic. And it was 
you know, it says well kept as you, I mean, they knew we were coming so we got a tour, but the homes were basically cardboard and twigs and, and you know, they are like itinerant workers or gypsies and um, they were very friendly, but they're, the way they lived was, was really sad. It's very depressing um, to think that people have to live like that. We also helped paint an elementary school. And um, so it was, it was a great trip, but it, it does, when you travel to these other countries and you see the discrepancies and the differences, it is eye opening. So I was glad to see that film. It brought back some memories, Paul, and I'm really glad that we're doing this project over there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dot. Um, and to, just to summarize what this grant uh, it proposes is that what we'll be doing is, is a part of the WINS uh, project, or, which is wash in schools. That's a term that they use there for, for this project. Uh, but it entails construction of separate toilet blocks for girls and boys, hand washing stations, drinking water stations, complete water storage tanks, water purifiers, and water coolers. So this will provide them in these government schools, as Dot mentioned, uh, these toilet blocks that will be in conditions that will be much greater than, than they have today to, to use. And then, you know, the ask is just, is, is the club interested in participating in this? Is your club interested? If they are, uh, it would be putting cash towards the global grant that we would be completing. Uh, we'd like to complete it sooner rather than later. And I asked why, well, it becomes the rainy season in June and July. So they want to start this, you know, April, May, June, and the construction of those could um, occur prior to the rainy season starting. So there is some urgency to, to get all this accomplished by the time that um, that uh, happens. So I will leave it uh, at that. And if y'all have, does anyone have questions? There's a question out there. Let's yeah, there's see. two in the chat, Paul. Um, um, can you advise the five clubs that are giving cash so we can talk about other clubs about this? Okay, you mean tell you the five clubs that have already given? Is that what you're asking, Lou? You're muted, but yes. Uh, Bluffton, Hilton Head, Daniel Island, Myrtle Beach, Shakora are the clubs that have already notified me of giving cash and then the district at $10,000. And 6,500 gets, yes, the 6,500 gets the toilet blocks as, and we even have a schematic or a plan of it uh, as it will look. And so we are, uh, I can put that, that will be in my next presentation uh, at conference when I'll have a little more than a few, the, the time I had to put this one together. <laughs> Bob, you're muted. Um, the uh, 6500 gets the two toilet blocks. Does it also get the the hand washing and the yes. uh, and the drink? Oh, okay. Yeah, That's every deal. Everything deal. is included in this plan. And, and they said, you know, depending upon the size of the school, it may be six thousand, it may be seven thousand. So, because there are schools that range anywhere from you know four hundred to over a thousand. So it just depends on which one is put in. And also where the, the connection will be is that we are looking to, uh, I'd like Interact Clubs to get involved with another project outside of this global grant. And this would be helping to fund benches that the kids sit on and uniforms. And that could be, you know, it's, it's a way for the Interact Clubs to see those uh, and, and, and or make connections with the Interact our interact clubs making connections with interact clubs in India. And most of those interact clubs are at the private schools. So the private schools do help the government run school kids with uh, supplies that they need also. So that's, that's an aside project, but the primary one right now that we want to focus on is getting the um, toilet blocks in the government schools. Uh, Bernie is asking, did I consider asking classmates? Absolutely. Um, I have now, we have a flyer that I'll be sending to my classmates, uh, which Bernie's asking my, my district governor classmates in our zone, uh, either zone 33, 34. And then I have some other folks uh, like Ann Matthews who are gonna help me with some other sources that we may have or connections. But if y'all have connections with other districts and 
and can help with DDF that they just have out there sitting there doing nothing. I'm happy to help with the use of that DDF because that's where the magic of the match uh, comes in. Um, any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all for listening. I look, look forward to hearing if there are clubs out there that want to participate in the global grant. And we'll see how many kids that we can help in India as we Rotarians do. We help those we may never see, we may never know, but we don't do it for any other, other than just providing a service to someone. And I think the impact that we'll have on folks halfway around the world will be great. And, and thank you for what y'all have done. I'm happy that the district is, is uh, supplying the cash and or the DDF and look forward to seeing what the clubs will help with and how many kids we can help in India. Thank y'all.